Hi, no, this, I'm is, not laughing this is Terry Spradlin with Hidden Treasures Broadcast, and we are in Joplin, Missouri, It'd and it's February, and we're freezing. And um, our first question is, what are the pros and cons of fierce competition and rivalry? Jackie Duvall. My friend Jackie Duvall. <laughs> um, of being in, insecure, in, uh, inadequate. What was your most frightening brush with death? Well, let's see. That's been pretty scary. In the U.S.? <laughs> True story. Um, I would say that, man, Larry's brought me through a lot of those. Hey, okay. um, go Larry. Going down I-44 and trying to let a, a big truck in because a car would not let him in, change, change lanes to get on off of the expressway. So we're on a motorcycle and Larry slows down to let the truck over and then and this is like in early 90s we're married no we're not married yet so it's probably 89 or so so then uh the car chases us and this is the slowest bike that larry has ever had and we are literally going down 11th street and larry's having to try to outmaneuver this car and weaving in and out of traffic on a saturday afternoon going down and you south you louis yeah, I mean, I had to keep my hands tucked in and my elbows in so that he could uh, look in the mirror, you know, to see where the car is. And when I look in the mirror, all I could see is the grill. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but and you know what? I have never had any fear when I'm with him on a bike. Aww. I have never, ever had any fear. I was Go Larry. worried that I have always trusted him okay. on a bike. Never have I ever had any fear. And we've run over Beaver, Big Beaver. On your bike? On the bikes. We've, uh, motorcycles. And we have been, gotten in tornadoes before. <laughs> stop! Now stop! <laughs> Let's get off of this. And? So, so we got off. You survived. You survived. We survived. Even in and out of traffic, you survived the beaver and you survived the tornado. T tornado on Talamina Drive. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and survived 22 years of marriage so far, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Which one was the hardest? <laughs> Probably 10. 10. Oh, I meant the beaver, the tornado, oh, the weaving in and out of traffic. I, you know what? 10 years was the hardest. The beaver didn't bother me. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the one, I, I'm the one who falls asleep on the motorcycles, you know. I, he has to hit his brakes to, to hit my wake helmet. You so you don't to fall wake, off. To wake me up, yeah, because yeah, I'd always fall asleep. Yeah. So you might have had more brushes with death that you just don't know about because you were taking it out. I know. God's so good to keep me a safe, <laughs> three. Matthew. Okay, we're going to read about the escape to Egypt. Uh, so read verse 13 first. Okay. And when they went, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord approached to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into, your, into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Okay, what happened after the uh, wise men left the home of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus? Uh, the, the Lord's in a dream told Joseph to get the baby and mama out of, out of Egypt because they were being targeted for death. Okay, where did the angel tell him to go and why? They told him to go to Egypt and wait for a word that he sent word that is clear that Herod's not there no more. Why was it necessary for Joseph to take his family to and flee? Because Herod had plans to kill the child. 14, when I'm he, sorry. Uh, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Okay. So, he took him and fled by night. Okay. Into uh, Egypt. Uh, verse 15. And then... Oh, excuse me. And was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. What event allowed Joseph to depart from Egypt with his family? Herod's death. Why was the escape to Egypt significant in the life of Christ? Because it was uh, being spoken that the prophecy is saying that he comes out of Egypt. Right. And that can also that be found in Exodus 4, 22 and 23 and Hosea 11, 1. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he diligently inquired of the wise men. What was King Herod's emotional state when he realized that the wise men had tricked him? Oh, he was exceedingly angry. Right. And then what did he do? He ordered the death of all children. Um, and it says all children two years and old and under, but I'm, I think it was the male children. Right. Okay. What order did King Herod give in an attempt to eliminate his competition? He killed the children who oh. were two and under. Right. Okay. Because in the two and under, he thought surely he would get Jesus. Okay. 17, verse 17. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Um, who prophesied the horrible episode? Jeremy the prophet. Okay, and you can find that in uh, maybe I Jeremiah 31, 15. Yeah. And then what was the response of Herod's mass execution of children? Oh, from the, from the a mothers. lot of uh, great weeping and moaning and just uh, grief, death. Okay. How might our lives be different in Herod's death if, if Herod's death plot against Christ had succeeded? Well, we wouldn't be here because... The lineage, the lineage, the generation of for, for Jesus would be here. So we wouldn't be here. Okay. What happens when people try to thwart God's plan? <laughs> it backfires. It, it, it comes back on them. I mean, like Herod. It, what the devil made for bad, God will turn it around for the good. So it's not going to work. So don't try to outsmart God. <laughs> Why is it important to listen to God? To do His will and because it's good for us and He doesn't want us to be hurt. Why? And because He loves us. Okay. And why is it important to obey God immediately? For our safety and for obedience. It's, it's like, um, well, it's victory. I was thinking about when the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and warned him about leaving. If he had hesitated in that warning, then then he life would, and death, life and death. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God yeah, gives absolutely. us warning. Sometimes it's for yeah. our own protection. If you, if you don't stop, you don't know if you if a car is gonna uh, if you're crossing the street, if a car is gonna come out of nowhere, or, or just uh, you know, like if you don't. Okay, say this afternoon when, when you said Jesus and Pastor Ron was doing something else and he almost rear-ended that lady because the light turned green, but she didn't go green. <laughs> right. So it's, it's uh, for our safety and for life and death. Okay. Um, what are some wise ways to handle anger? Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> what is it? Try about always. competition that makes us feel threatened. We want to win. <laughs> We're competitors. What is the best response to rivals or opponents? Um, I would say to walk in love and to try to lift them up and not, not, to, not to brag about your own way of doing things or what you could or couldn't do but to just try to lift them up without promoting the I don't know how to say it just uh, kind of just be easy about it I mean not don't have to put them down because they're bragging or or whatever trying to it be encouraging but okay what is the uh, how can Christians serve those who are the victims of senseless violence? I'd say pray in the spirit and just pray. 
because when I I have found that when I get around violence or or uncomfortable, I, I'm getting to where I just pray in the spirit. I don't care if it's just to myself or, but it calms me down. And and I know if it's calming me down, that it's got to be calming the angry person down. In what area of life do you need to trust God more instead of being driven by competition? Um, driven by competition, I don't. I don't trust know. God and not driven by competition in everything because, uh, like, I would like to have this or this or this, but you got to trust God that He knows what's good for me mm-hmm. and to do what He has for me and not do it on my own. What action could you take today to minister to someone who is mourning? Love on them and um, <laughs> that's really awesome that you said that. I don't think you were in the service but there was use was the children. There was a lady two weeks ago, the Sunday before Extreme Impact came in and she has she's a a visitor there at the Joseph house and she came in and she you could tell there was grief all over and she had just lost her husband just before Christmas and and I was holding on her and, and loving on her and stuff and praying for her. She then we had ice one day so she didn't come to church. So when she came to church I went and sat with her and, and she's a little Asian lady and the Holy Spirit touched that woman and it was just so it was just so beautiful and she just like I was the Holy Ghost <laughs> I got touched. <laughs> it was so awesome, you know, because because he, he just did so much healing in just that five minutes, you know. That's, nobody can heal like he can and comfort. So. Okay, can you pray for someone that might be um, going through mourning right now? Father God, we just lift up this person or people, and I just thank you right now, Father God, that that you fill up the hole in their heart Father God I thank you Lord that just put them under your wing and I just thank you Father God that you're your comforter you've sent the comforter here on earth to be our comforter while Je- the people are with you in Jesus and in heaven Father God and I thank you Lord right now that that you've already gone before away uh, before them and made a way where there seems to be no way you're already there Lord and that they just need to trust you and that they just need to to be calm father god i thank you father god that you're with them that you never left them that when they feel like they're weary and they can't go on lord i thank you lord that that's when you're carrying them father god i thank you that's like the footprints in the sand lord that you're carrying them they think they're alone but they're but you're right there with them and i thank you lord that that you open up their hearts so that they will have a deeper relationship with you and to, to give them a, a word or a sign father god that their people are are happy and they're with you lord and i thank you father god just to give them peace and confirmation if they need confirmation that they've made it to heaven lord i just thank you right now that they are and i thank you father god for this person's salvation in jesus name and i thank you that we cover them in the blood of jesus and we put a hedge of protection around them and i say that there is no condemnation in any any decisions made lord i thank you father god that there was no right or wrong decisions made I thank you, Father God, that they are more than worthy enough, Father God, and that they are not uh, condemned. I thank you, Father God, that they made right choices, and I thank you, Father God, right now that I put a hedge of protection around their mind thoughts, and I say, say, say that you take your hands off of them right now, that you have no authority over their mind thought right now in any area of their home, and I say right now you stay out of their home, you stay away from the family. And I just thank you for peace right now. And I call for salvation and restoration in these families. And I just thank you right now, Father God, that peace surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen.